Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott. Ring lights have become very popular amongst a lot of people, particularly those that do have YouTube channels and they're very useful for doing things like beauty type work. And of course for photographers, they're a staple because they provide a very nice even illumination for portraiture and also that really cool circular catch light in the eye that has a little bit of a, you know, a sci-fi type effect. And so uh, they're popular for a number of reasons, and I've used a few of them over the years, but this is the one that I have kind of settled on that I'm using most often at the moment. And I'm here to talk to you today about one from lighting manufacturer Angler. This is the CILR20. So this is a 19 inch LED ring light. And uh, one of the reasons why I do like it is because of the fact that it does use LEDs. I've used some before that uh, used CFL, that were CFL based. One of the challenges with CFL is when it comes to doing things like local dimming on them. And so one of the things that I, I really like about this particular light is that it has, for one thing, an actual dimming switch as opposed to buttons, you know, trying to ramp it up, but rather you can very easily glide all the way up um, and illuminate to the total place where you have all 640 LEDs at maximum power. It is a lot of light that is put out and, and thus you have to be kind of careful if you're using it on a subject. If you have it on full blast, it really is quite blinding to look into. But it does put out a lot of power and so it's made it very handy. I've actually been using this quite a bit even if I'm doing test charts or if I'm calibrating lenses uh, for my own channel simply because it's, it's portable, it's easy to take and it has a really high light output. Now one of the challenges I've run into with some other ring lights before, particularly the ones using CFLs, is that they, they typically will come with some kind of diffuser type panels. And in some cases that's actually been like a plastic overlay. But there is a challenge there in that because one in particular I use where it would seal off this entire area with plastic and so heat would begin to build up inside. And so built into the ring light was a protection circuit to keep it from overheating. And so without warning periodically it would just power down. And that can be a pretty serious liability if you're right in the middle of shooting an episode, for example, or in the middle of a portrait shoot. And so I vastly prefer the method that comes here, and I've already got it kind of attached to make it nice and quick. But uh, this is simply a diffuser type panel that's more of a sleeve that uh, goes over the top and uh, it's just a material and, and so it's very easy. It uses simple Velcro, so bravo for simplicity. Um, just simple Velcro straps to attach that and thus it helps to, uh, once you have that quickly attached, it just diffuses the amount of light output out of there and so it's a little easier on the eyes and uh, also it helps the light to be a little bit softer and eliminate some of the hot spots you might otherwise have. Now, in terms of the overall uh, kind of design of this, there's a few things that I want to uh, point to as a part of it. Uh, you can set it up a, a couple of different ways, and uh, right now, this is the, the method that I have decided to go with primarily. And I've actually got this mounted to a quick release plate, or a quick release plate that's um, mounted to it, I guess I should say. And that allows me to just, and by the way, it comes with this nice padded carrying bag. I just keep this whole thing assembled. I just uh, unattach the uh, the power supply and but I keep it set up basically like this and uh, thus with the um, the quick release plate all already on there and so it's very easy to just put it on there and then as you can see it's easy for me to just kind of maneuver it around. I've got a pistol grip on the tripod I primarily use for it. And I just find that a tripod is a little bit easier to transport than sometimes, say, a light stand. You do also have the option, it comes with a, a gooseneck type attachment that will go at the top of a standard light stand and then you can mount it up here. Now, one of the negatives about the Angler um, CI-LR20 is that the fact that it isn't a toolless assembly. And what I mean by that is if you're going to attach it either to the gooseneck or in this case I've got it attached um, to this assembly and then onto a quick release plate, you actually have to remove a couple of Phillips screws and uh, put the plate in place and put the screws back in. And, uh, and so some people have found just 
that they don't like having to use a tool, obviously, but also that the, the screws and the machining overall is not top tier. And I would agree with that. Even these uh, knobs that you can use for um, kind of adjusting things up and down, I just find that they're a little less precise than what I would like. There also is, of course, you can adjust this up, up or down and you can mount an assembly on here where you can actually attach your camera right to this as opposed to another tripod if you want to shoot through uh, the ring light. So that's a nice option. And depending um, if you're shooting on a kind of a level angle, that works fine. Um, otherwise, you might need to use a more typical tripod. Right now, I can tell that this needs a little bit of loosening on the, the quick release plate. And so you can see that it's a little bit uh, tippy here. But anyway, um, so I would say that that is a potential positive that, you know, the construction is, is fine and I've had no issues with it. I've been using it now for months, but at the same time, it's not top tier in terms of the, the mechanical aspect. Now, I do like the fact that everything breaks down nice and easy with the power supply, easy to store. It does have a power brick and that leads me to one thing to watch out for. Not a problem, just something you need to be aware, aware of. I was starting to use it a few months ago and I noted after an extended period, I started to hear this high pitch whine in the room. And I at first thought it was a, a whine being emitted from the actual light itself as it began to heat up. What it actually was, however, after I began, you know, putting my ear here and there was a, it was actually coming from this power supply and I discovered it was because I was on a hardwood floor and I had it turned upside down. You'll see that on the bottom of this there's actually a some sound damping little feet and that is to eliminate that very issue and so if you, you make sure that when you set it down you're sitting it down with those kind of vibration absorbing feet um, down if you're on a hard surface and that will eliminate that. Ever since that point I can run it for long periods of time and I hear no wine. I just needed to figure that out. So I just wanted to pass it on to you. Now the upside of it being, you know, this is primarily plastics and construction here. And so if there's an upside to that, it is that the whole assembly itself is quite light. Uh, 2.85 pounds or 1.3 kilos. It makes it easy even if you want to, you don't even have a stand, you just need to hand hold or have an assistant hand hold uh, while you're working. Um, and so it, you know, it works quite easily for that and that's an upside. Once it's stored in the bag, everything is nice and light and easy to use. So as far as the actual light output, I really like it. It's a nice, even of course, production of light. It's set at 5,500 Kelvin or a daylight white balance, which makes it great in photography. If you actually know the color temperature of the light, you can set a 5,500 Kelvin daylight setting in your camera and boom, you can get very accurate uh, lighting results. And so that's nice to have. The, the dimming goes anywhere between 10% or really 0% all the way up to 100% in 10% increments, but it ramps up nice and smooth. And so I find that it's easy to get the, the light output that I want from it. So overall, everything works as it should. I've had no issues. Yes, the hardware, I would like it to be a little bit better engineered, but fortunately, at least for my use, most of these things you're setting and then leaving. And so it really hasn't been all that big a deal, truth be told. The price point on this is right now it's at 200 bucks and the actual list price says 299, but I think most of the times I've looked, it's been around $200 mark. And so that makes it a pretty fair value um, for an LED based ring light. And I definitely would recommend that you go with an LED type over a CFL. They dim much better. Um, and obviously you can get the degrees of dimming as opposed to just a few different settings. They don't heat up, and so as a result, it's just a better technology, period. I'm Dustin Abbott. I'll throw a link down below um, with a buying link if you want to go and take a look at one of these for yourself at BH Photo. Also, if you haven't already, you can follow me on social media, sign up for my newsletter, and if you haven't, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. <laughs>